Okay, welcome to our today's Site Supervisor Panel presentation. I'm Pat Frank, uh, and I'm the coordinator for the SLIS Internship Program. Uh, we have three presentations during this session. The first is by Denise McIver from the California African American Museum. And then we have with us Karen Schneider from Holy Names University and Lee Gleason from the University of California Riverside. Uh, you also see uh, the image of Melissa LaFranchise, our student research assistant who put this together for us. So I'm going to turn the mic over to Denise now to uh, go through her presentation. Denise, welcome. Thank you for doing this. Well, thank you for inviting me and welcome to all of the students. Um, I wanted to keep my presentation very short and tight, so I try to only submit four slides. I think I have four or five slides. Um, the California African American Museum is based near USC on the edge of downtown Los Angeles. We're south of Exposition and we're a bit west of Figueroa. We've been in existence since 1977 when we were chartered by the state of California, but we did not open to the public until 1984. As you can see from the slide, um, we are considered a special collection. The areas of concentration are U.S. general history, art history, regional history, and of course African American history. We normally mount approximately 8 to 11 exhibitions every year. We are free to the general public because it's the good people of California who keep our doors open with their tax dollars. Our very first um, exhibition was mounted in 1984 in time with the Summer Olympics, which kind of re, I think, I'd like to think of it as the rebirth of Los Angeles. And if any of you are currently living in Los Angeles, you know that this city has become a major tourist destination. Uh, and we're quite proud of the offerings that all of the museums in Los Angeles County offer to the public, some at a fee and some that are free, such as ours. We also host approximately 80 to 90 free events every year. Some of these programs and events surround our current ongoing exhibitions, and some of them are what I call sub-brands, such as Films at CAM, which is a series of films that are shown every quarter, and there's usually a theme. For example, in June, we'll be showing four films that all have to do with African American music or music of the African diasporic experience. And then we have Conversations at CAM, which is something that's organized by one of our history curators, and that happens every quarter. So I think um, I gave you a very broad stroke. If we can go to the next slide, please. The primary task that um, I would like an intern to embrace and take on has to do with, first and foremost, making sure internal staff have what they need in terms of research requests being fulfilled. We're also, like I said, we're a state-funded agency, which means I'm open to the public, but we do not loan. Scholars and researchers can always come in, use the materials we have, and they can, of course, we're set up for Wi-Fi, so if they ever wanted to do you know, database research, they can do that. But we do not loan. It's not a lending library. So as you can see, there are a number of pressing, and it's always pressing because I'm a solo librarian here, but I also do social media for the institution, and I also do web content management and manage and edit our quarterly newsletter. So 
actually, I'm probably doing less librarianship than I would really like, but because we are small staff and many of us wear 14 hats, I do the same. It's part of the, I guess you could say it's the corporate culture here, even though we're a nonprofit. So there are basic uh, tasks that I'd like to complete over the course of your internship. And a lot of it has to do with just helping to reorganize the library. We can go to the next slide. Um, I believe in each one teach one. So I was very fortunate to have some wonderful mentors when I was in grad school and pursuing my MLS, and I do believe in that wholeheartedly. In exchange, what I'd like to see from the intern is a commitment to developing a career in an information setting. I'd like someone who is, and I've been seeing this phrase a lot, idea generator. And it's a very broad term, but someone who thinks proactively and wants to make things happen. It's as simple as that. Um, one of the things I'd like you to use are the critical thinking skills that you're amassing as you undergo your LIS studies. And I think that's very important no matter what industry you work in. I mean, I came out of the entertainment industry before I went to library school. And I learned to, that was an excellent experience because all the writing that I do here, I did as an entertainment publicist. Um, I want to promote this library more to the general public. I feel that it's underused to a degree. And I'd like someone to also teach me. Because I've been out of school now a while, a couple of years, and things change so rapidly in this field. So I'd like to learn at your knee if you're willing to share information and best practices. May we go to the next slide, please? Is that it? I think that might be it. Um, one of the things I like to do is to have fun, and I believe in field trips. I believe that you can only make a career decision if you're exposed or have enough information upon which to base your ultimate decision. So my previous interns, one of whom is a former classmate, she graduated last December, um, worked with me, and we did tours to local libraries. Uh, one of the best was going up to Western Costume because there there is a research librarian there, and it's an amazing collection of clothes. Any feature film or television or music video you might see that's been done professionally probably rented their wardrobe from Western Costume. They have eight miles of pipe on which hang their collection of clothing. So we've been to the Police Museum here, which is very interesting. Uh, we've been to the Fashion Institute of Design, and I have also taken interns to LACMA. I also happen to be on the board of LAS Subject, and any intern who works with me who has a deep interest in LA history and historical collections and archives is welcome to come and become a member. I believe it's free to join up. And we usually, um, they are usually hosted at USC's library. Uh, the LAS subject is a collection of archivists, historians, private collectors, as well as just interested parties who love the history of LA and want to make sure it's collected and shared and made accessible. Every year, LAS subject host, or I should say produces, the Archives Bazaar, which is held at the Doheny Library, which is how I met one of my interns last year who happened to graduate from San Jose State University. She was at the 
Archives Bazaar. So I think that's about it for me. Are there any questions? Are we going to wait to the end? We are, and right now what I have on the screen is your contact information, so you might want to explain how a student would apply for the position. What I would like is a short cover letter, not to exceed more than a page and a half, along with your updated resume, and why you think you would like to embark upon a career in a special library setting. Okay, thank you very much. That was quite interesting, and uh, I am impressed with your uh, willingness to share your professional associations with these students. That's wonderful. I believe in that, and I think networking is critical. The, what, the reason I'm sitting in this chair today is because someone I knew from my entertainment background referred me and recommended me for this position. Um, so I think networking and maintaining relationships and making new ones is very important, especially for new students and especially in this current marketplace. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. Now we'll move on to the next presentation. And I will turn the mic over to Karen Schneider, who will talk to us about Holy Names University. Well, hi, everybody. Well, it's really interesting presentations to my I'm fascinated. It's nice to hear from other people. Can you all hear me all right? Um, yes, we can. So, okay, great. Uh, so Nicole Branch can't be with us tonight because she was able to attend a special dinner with um, uh, a, uh, a, a speaker who's coming to camp campus tomorrow. And it's funny, I just blanked out on his name. Wait, um, John Carlos. Uh, we uh, Nicole and I served on a committee that selected his book as the All Campus Read, and he has come to campus tonight, which is just wonderful. Um, but, um, so I will talk a little bit about our two internships that we have at Holy Names University. But first, I'll tell you a little bit about us. So we are uh, a very tiny university. We have about 1,400 students, about 1,100 FTE. And we're a mix of liberal arts. We've got nursing programs, education, we've got several graduate programs, um, a nice small but very nice music program. We also have the distinction of being called by the U.S. News and World Report the most diverse United, university in the United States. Um, and uh, about half of our students are first generation students. Uh, and we were founded by nuns in the, um, 1868 who came to California on a mission to found a um, school for girls and women. And it's a very uh, liberal denomination. We had just huge commitment to social justice. The, um, there's very few nuns left on campus, but the ones who are there have wonderful stories to tell about uh, East Bay and how it's changed. Um, we're in the Oakland Hills, um, beautiful views. And um, our library, I think, is we've I've been there four years now, and we have a lot of fun. Um, we're a very small team. There's about five and a half regular employees, and then there's about 12 student workers and a couple of GAs. And um, but we think of ourselves as being very agile uh, with our size, and we have a very close relationship with our faculty and staff on campus. And that's, that makes it really nice. I feel that it's a very collegial campus and that people work really hard to provide, to, to really support student learning to students um, who um, might otherwise not be in school and um, we work very hard to graduate with them. So, um, so we have two internships. Now we've done other internships in the past. And in fact, we have, we had a new position developed in the last year that's a half-time regular employee, um, and the person who filled it was our spring intern. How about that? Uh, Jacob Kubrin, who um, is graduating this December from Holy Names. Um, yeah, and in fact, uh, we have another temporary cataloger who's another Swiss grad, and we've, we've had several Swiss grads come in and then stay beyond and do some other work. We don't actually have a regular cataloger. I'm the head cataloger, as it were. Um, so, um, but we've managed by hook and by crook to get a lot of cataloging done with temps and interns, and 
uh, both of these interns are internships are paid. It's not very much, but it'll at least uh, you know uh, cover gasoline and and lunches and, and whatnot. Um, and um, so let me tell you about the first one: copy cataloging. You know, it's just straightforward copy cataloging. I know that sounds not that interesting, but I'll tell you, if you are looking for a cataloging position, having hours and hours of work under your belt, especially in an environment where you're closely supervised and, and where you can take books that are problem books and take them to the intern supervisor and say, you know, what do I do with this one? What do I do with that one? You get real hands-on troubleshooting. It's not just mark them and park them. Uh, because a lot of our copy cataloging comes from our weed work, work, workflow. We have, what we're doing is we're going through our collection, book truck at a time. Uh, our collection is not that distinguished, so about half the book truck ends up going off to Better World Books and the other half gets cataloged. Um, so those tend to be older books, they tend to be more problematic, and that makes the copy cataloging more interesting and fun. Um, it's, this is on-site internship, and um, it's in a shared office that can be hot in the summer and cold in the winter and it has a lot of traffic, so you have to be good with that. But uh, you would actually share the office space with uh, Jacob, the intern who cataloged all of our theses and then became our ILO person, which is really cool. And um, in terms of the type of cop copy cataloging, we have straightforward what we call NICs, or not in catalogs. Um, books that never got, were never retrospectively converted. We only began circulating online in 2009, uh, I, right before I arrived. So we, we've, had a, we've had a lot of catch up to do. Um, we are, you do need to prepare for, for a mix of ACR2 and RDA. Um, we're looking for someone who's really interested in, you know, cataloging and doing it well. Um, we have several flavors of collections that need attention. We have your garden variety, not in catalog, or NIC, and then we have um, uh, a, a large number of scores and mini scores and music monographs that also need attention. And then we have other areas that need a lot of uh, TLC, uh, such as education collection and so forth. But if there are any uh, budding music catalogers out there, um, we'd certainly like to hear from you. We can handle it in-house, but it, it would be great experience for a music cataloger. And in fact, we just accepted uh, mini scores from what was kind of a former, um, not real, not real, real music library that's on campus. And it's exciting to add that information. Um, then we have another internship, and um, that has that is has to do with a grant that we received this year from IMLS. Um, it's, a, it's a, one of the small Sparks Innovation Grants, and our, the grant is called Flipped Info Lit. And what we proposed was to extend the reach of our information literacy instruction through um, small digital learning objects that will allow students, allow a couple of things. One is spend more time in the classroom on active learning, which our uh, intrepid instruction team I love to do. They're really wonderful instructors. There's just two of them, but they're great. Um, and the other thing is to allow better outreach for information literacy um, to athletes and graduate students and other students, and particularly in areas that, that require a lot of uh, review and repetition, like citation management. And if you've ever deal with students um, dealing with citation, that's, that's uh, it's, it's a real challenge. So this fall, we created most of the small videos. Uh, Daniel and Nicole will be creating them. But the intern will help us with our partnerships with the nursing and athletics. Will help you know help start instructors embed the um, tools in their Blackboard, encourage the use, help produce more objects, and help with the marketing and outreach. So that's more of a portmanteau, all kinds of internship. And it, again, is mostly on site. I know that some of this could probably be done a little bit off site, but like other intern supervisors have said, we have found that it really is important for our interns um, to get on site experience. And I think when you're out job hunting, you're going to find that um, uh, um, that, that um, it really will stand your ground. When people look at an online degree, I know you're getting a great degree at San Jose State. I, I would imagine there about a decade or so back a couple times around. Um, 
but you will find that having it on your resume that you did an on-site internship will give you an important critical edge in what is a very tough market out there, um, especially in Northern California. So they're both really good internships. Um, we have a lot of fun. We do great work. Um, the team is wonderful, and um, we've got uh, all kinds of interesting things going on in the library. But like I said, the copy cataloging may sound mundane, but it's surprisingly important. And the information literacy is uh, really kind of fun, especially if you're very interested in information literacy um, and, and or online learning and digital learning. Um, instructional design and so forth, that, that might be one up your alley. And that one you really need to be willing to be hands-on with people and outgoing um, because you'll be working with faculty, staff, and, and students. Um, so what are we looking for? Well, a self-starter, um, some people who are mature, good communicator, well organized, and attention to detail. Um, the cataloging person needs to know connection, AAC or two, and RDA. We do have a subscription to the RDA toolkit, and you have several people on site who have familiarity with both. I have to say I'm not really very good at RDA, but I support it, and I know we're starting to see a mix of RDA and AAC or two, or as I call it, AAC or RDA. Um, you see these portmanteau records. Um, and you're not expected to be an expert, but you're expected to be a good problem solver and also to know, to have the judgment when to set aside an item and say, I need um, help and when to just press on. And uh, you, you'll also be doing a little bit of technical processing with spine labels and mylar jackets, as we all do. And um, it, for the information literacy internship, because we really are going to be hitting the ground running in the spring, if you have experience with providing information literacy instruction in a real library setting, that's a huge plus. And a facility and comfort level with online learning projects is, is essential. Um, that's, that's going to be really important. Um, and a uh, sense of humor and patience is important too. We're, you know, it's an older university. We're a resource challenged, but we somehow make it happen every year. And um, uh, it, it, it just really helps. So if you want to know more, uh, contact me or Nicole Branch and um, include your CV in a cover letter. And I will tell you right up front, we will look over your CV and cover letter with a fine tooth comb. Um, be sure to, you know, get, get somebody to look at your materials. Um, the hiring process is pulling in. Our interns, um, our employees, separate part-time employees, and it will include a background check, an I-9, and a W-4. So I think that kind of covers it. I don't, I'm, it's not as, I'm sure we're not, we're more of a, of a vanilla small private academic library, but um, we're a really interesting environment uh, to work in, especially as we, we um, investigate all these things. And we're, uh, uh, structured around a very traditional system. We have an IT person uh, who's MITE. We have two uh, instructional librarians. We have a head of access services who's got your union complement of student workers who cover most of the desk hours. And um, we provide uh, walk-up and online research help services. And uh, we have a lot of parties and events. I came in this morning and there were like four empty wine bottles from some uh, huge art reception last night in the library. Just, I could tell some, somebody was having a good time. So that's, uh, those are the internships in a nutshell. And we have supervised a number uh, at this library, and I've also supervised as many, I think as far back as 2002, I was supervising interns for San Jose State. So we, we know the deal, and you will get a lot of attention. All right, now we'll go to the uh, last presentation. This one's by Lee Gleason, who will talk about the University of California Riverside. So Lee, go ahead. All right, thank you, Pat, and, and thank you both, Denise and Karen. I've so enjoyed listening to your presentations, and I hope Carrie and everyone watching uh, asynchronously will as well. Uh, I am speaking on behalf of one department of UCR, which is the California Museum of Photography. 
and we are separate from the UCR libraries, and I do believe that my colleagues there, both in water resources in the science library as well as uh, in special collections, have their own internships, and I think they're described on the SLIS website. Uh, but we at California Museum of Photography are actually part of one of the university's colleges, uh, the College of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences. And in 1990, the university thought it would be a great move to put us in downtown Riverside, about two and a half miles from the UCR campus, um, to help with town-gown relations, to be a better outreach for the community, and to, to achieve a lot of things that were pretty vital to our mission. Uh, we were founded in 1973, so from 73 to 90, we were on campus. And then since 90, we've been downtown and really I think have thrived quite well uh, in downtown Riverside. And for anyone not familiar, Riverside's in Southern California, um, about 60 miles east of Los Angeles, about 100 miles north of San Diego, 40 miles or so from Palm Springs. Uh, so we are um, we are a bit off the grid from you know the major cities that you think of when you think of Southern California, although I know there's quite a few uh, SLIS students in the Inland Empire, as our region is called. When we were founded in 1973, we started with a whole lot of cameras, and since then have um, have gone into other things, archival collections, primarily negative holdings, um, photographs, uh, books, and um, and a few papers, collections, and, and more traditional archive material. We also, of course, are a museum and we do exhibitions, um, although my area, I'm the curator of collections, my area doesn't do anything directly with that, or it's rare when we do. So I have two different internships listed with SLIS that I would love to find interested people to help with. Uh, the first one is my, my more normal, stable, general project, which is someone working with me in collections. Um, we have this huge, diverse collection, cameras, photographs, negatives, books, papers, you know, like I said before. And I really try with every single student I work with uh, to to match their interest with um, with a project so that they're doing something that hopefully interests them, engages them, and helps give them experience in something they're wanting to build on their own resume. So the projects vary a lot, and uh, depending who you are and what you're interested in, there may be a project that would be an ideal fit for you that I haven't even thought of yet. I have an undergrad intern this uh, quarter, for example, who is a, a biology major, and I've never had a science person come to us before because we're an art museum and the science people at UCR don't tend to think about us. Um, but we have all kinds of scientific photographs that I knew that she had an expertise and an understanding of that no one who's ever worked with me before would have would have handled in the same way. So uh, she loves her project and loves that it has some relevance to her major and she's applying her own knowledge that she's gained through her, she's a senior, so her four years of college. But uh, you know, it helps us too because it helps us understand our own collection better than we could have on our own because we're a mix of artists and art historians and librarians and, and humanities people. Um, so it's it's hopefully good for everyone that way. And uh, with SLIS, I have one San Jose intern uh, who I thought was wonderful. She's now long graduated from the program. Uh, but she just wanted to get her hands in processing, start to finish, writing a finding aid. Um, and she wrote a really excellent finding aid for us for a fairly complex collection. And it's now on our online archives of California um, encoded in EAD, which we did through um, Archivist Toolkit after her internship. Uh, we are involved with Online Archives of California. We are involved, we do use Archivist Toolkit to some extent. We are uh, going to be involved in the OAC's piloting, piloted hosting of um, archive space. So uh, for anyone really interested in trying out these different systems, it's another opportunity. Our own collection database when we're dealing with non-archival objects has been in FileMaker. And this year, we're planning on transitioning to a major museum system called TMS for the museum system. Um, and so certainly any intern interested in learning about these things could see that as well. 
the other project I really want to hype is one that I haven't actually had an intern for yet, um, but I've just been, been really hoping to find the right person one of these days. And that is someone working with our museum library. We've had books in our collection since our founding 40 years ago. Uh, but until I started at the museum, and really until actually I earned my, my MLIS from San Jose several years back, um, no one really paid attention to the library. And uh, in the last couple of years, I've worked with UCR libraries and um, set up an agreement where we are cataloging through um, their millennium-based system and, um, and getting through everything. And we really need uh, to, to start from the, from the ground up here, we, <laughs> I like your comment, Sarah, um, we, we need policies in place because we'll get curators turning in books to us, and I know no one's ever going to pull these books from our shelves, and if we have our policies written that we can go through all the rigmarole of getting them read by the right people and getting them approved, um, it will help deal with these sorts of issues and help us be able to lead more effectively and, and build the sort of collection that it should look like when it's all done. Uh, so. So if you're interested in collection development and collection management issues as it comes to a special library, um, you know, this is a project I would love to work with you with and, and we'd go through it together and we'd be in meetings with our administrative staff and, and make this happen. Um, if you're interested in, in some other aspect of this, I mean, this is really a, a ripe ground to work with a special library, I think very similar to the situation Denise is in, where we have a lot of needs and, and just the right person to match the needs we have, um, it can be a tremendous experience for you. Um, and so, <laughs> thanks Denise, um, and so the, the qualifications I'm looking for um, really because we are a museum of photography, we really like people to care about photography. I know that sounds a little bit obvious, but um, especially in my dealing with undergraduates, you'd be surprised at how often that's not the case. Um, if, you, if you like photography, you don't have to be, you know, a, a photographer of Ansel Adams quality. You don't have to, um, you know, you don't have to even own a camera. I don't care. But if you're curious about it and interested in it, um, I think it makes it more fun for everyone. Um, the other the other things I'm going through here, I, you know, talk about, I, obviously I'm curious about your coursework. I'm curious about, um, curious about, you know, uh, the sort of topics we're dealing with here, but we've, we really try our best, like I said before, to match with projects um, that interest you and our needs. We have a lot of needs, and so often we can find a great semester-long project that you'll be very proud of at the end, and we will be very happy to have had your help with. And so I'm just looking for a resume and cover letter. It's really helpful for me to know your availability for on-site when, um, when you do apply, so I like for people to include that. Um, unfortunately, our internships are unpaid right now, but I'm hoping in future terms to have some grants where we can pay students. I hate not paying students for amazing work. Um, but I, I can, of course, offer references, and um, I've been referenced for my uh, Swiss intern, and she's gotten those jobs. And, uh, you know, it's, it, we are a small community at the museum, and we really are out to support you, and hopefully that makes it worth it for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that was also a very interesting, wonderful opportunity for students. And I believe the only internship that uh, I heard uh, that was paid uh, a little bit today was the Holy Names University. Uh, but all internships uh, can be very valuable to our students. And uh, we have probably the majority are unpaid. Uh, uh, we do not get involved in that part of the uh, negotiation. All we do is worry about the credits and the student learning outcomes that the students will achieve by participating in the uh, internship. So I'm going to uh, just pause for a minute and see if we have any questions for any of our presenters. Yes, Denise is mentioning that she had, and she was an intern already in Federal Reserve Bank, which helped her about conducting oral history. You know, I was thinking, 
of the individuals that uh, you had mentioned uh, that uh, are um, uh, still available that have so much to share and wondering if any of you were conducting oral histories. But um, okay. oh, Jake did oral histories for a while? Okay. Is that is that what you're saying there, Jake? Oh, I think you're referring to public transportation. Is that right? <laughs> Side to hard to take public transportation to Holy Name. Muted, yeah. And I see that the the uh, CAM internship is also approved. Yeah. But wonderful references, great networking opportunities. That's exactly what uh, students get out of that. Terry, I think you might be uh, typing there. Uh, would you like to take the, take the mic, or do you have a question? Oh, there you go. Uh, I say thank you for all of you. Thank you. All right, any other questions? Okay, then what I'd like to do is uh, thank our presenters uh, this evening for sharing their time. and. Uh, expertise with us and I do hope that we can send some wonderful book interns your way.